COVID starts with a wide variety of symptoms. It's quite challenging and actually impossible to distinguish these symptoms from a multitude of other viral illnesses. So the initial symptoms that someone might have might be a sore throat, a fever, a cough, GI symptoms, maybe abdominal pain or diarrhea. Other patients develop vomiting, but sometimes COVID can be entirely asymptomatic. So it really runs the gamut from asymptomatic to a very strong virus like influenza. It may look like strep throat, it might look like a bronchitis or even a, a GI bug, or even having eaten something a little off the night before. At this stage of the illness, it's basically impossible to distinguish a patient with COVID from a myriad other common ailments. And if this is all that we knew about the presentation, we'd pretty much be at a loss, have to throw up our hands and say, if you have any, pretty much almost any symptom, including headache, you, you might have COVID. But there are some tips, some hints that something else is going differently. One of the things is that very early on, people might lose their sense of smell. This could very well be a tip off that we're dealing with COVID. But what happens next gives us some hints to the diagnosis. What's most important about all of these early symptoms, including rash, is that we haven't yet seen dyspnea. Shortness of breath, interestingly, does not seem to be a common initial presentation for COVID. What happens is that after this initial viral-like illness, time passes. These symptoms may continue. They may even improve. Somewhere maybe between days four and eight, there's the development of dyspnea. Now, when dyspnea develops, sometime between days four and eight, are the most critical days of the illness and to carefully assess our patients to make sure that they're not worsening. Because a subset of people who develop dyspnea will do relatively poorly, potentially developing ARDS and require intubation. We also know that there are many patients, and hopefully it'll turn out to be the majority of patients who develop dyspnea, who will have a stable clinical course and will not require intubation might not require even hospitalization.